uh, now, do you want to go through the... Um, yeah, go I've, through? I've signed in on both uh, my laptop and my phone because my phone computer is acting weird, so I might have to switch between the two. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. no worries. Um, do you want to go over the questions or do you want to move forward? Yeah, okay. um, that next chapter looks super interesting. Chapter eight. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I don't know how Bayes kind of fits into that part of uh, whatever, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to find out. This is where the Bayesian stuff comes up, isn't it? It so starts, yeah. Uh, let me open the, uh, open the file for it. What is it? Regression of the stories. Uh, oh, I see my GitHub account. Oh wait, so oh so it, so because it's Bayesian, I guess uh, do do the other are the packages different here? Like I guess you can't use is BRMS also for Bayesian stuff, or is that only for? Yeah, it's it's Bayesian. I see. Okay, I'll just knit the document together, and then we can just like um, work hmm, through yeah. that. Um, yeah. I, I read this one a few weeks ago now, so I'm not really sure. Um, how do you get so ahead? I, I literally am like scraping the bottom of the barrel. I think I just literally managed to do it like a few minutes before the session. And that too, it's like skimming through. Oh yeah. Well, don't, don't be too impressed. Um, <laughs> basically <laughs> what, 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 what happened was I had one of those famous lulls in the work where I was just waiting for people to sign off on things. To finish so, up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was able to scrape by it, but now I'm back under the, um, the, the snow starting to build on the roof kind of thing and it's not long before it comes pouring over the top yeah and at that point you're like uh, oh but i had some downtime it's hard to believe that you actually had downtime at some point when that happens yeah well i can't wait for this to kick off because there are there's two things going wrong at once which is you know fantastic oh my god that's so nice. <laughs> well i sold this algorithm to my boss i was like this looks great let's use it well not to my boss but to my um to my ceo it's like this looks great we should definitely use this it's cutting edge stuff and i ran it once and the uh, benchmark on it was just like uh, 20 minutes really for, uh, for about 10 epochs um <laughs> 10 epochs did you say 10 epochs yeah you, so are you doing like some kind of climate modeling or some something like that or it's a general adversarial network um so basically oh. what what you do is you oh. kind of feed the data into one end uh reduce down the dimensionality of it and then it gets extracted by oh, back out the other end and the uh what's oh. it the discriminator has to work out whether it kind of plays a true or false game right and discriminator discriminator has to work out whether something is true or false and eventually by getting a really, a really, really good pattern, it can say, well, this is most like things. So then you can then, but the problem is on top of that, what it then builds on is it says, so this is the pattern that we expect and this is yeah. the truth, uh, which must mean that anything that is outside this truth or is easily bypassable mm. is therefore an outlier. An outlier. Um, but it's, yeah, it takes a long time. This markdown file is taking ages oh my god you're so right i yeah i i don't know the, the last time it didn't open at all but yeah that's right um it is it, it seems to be loading it i think it's for it seems to be loading uh rc plus plus in the black background rc plus plus is the absolute worst i always run into problems with that oh well, luckily i yeah. don't have to program in that <laughs> yeah really <laughs> Into the stuff by Dirk uh, Edenbutel. I think he does a lot of the RCPP work. Have you heard of him? Um, um, he makes it sound it. so simple. Like coming out of his talk, you're like, oh, RCPP, I could do that. I mean, like it, it just, he, it's just like deceptively sounds really simplistic. But yeah. People have been doing this kind of stuff for ages, always make it sound simple. It's, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, so we just, uh, all right, I'll wait. Uh, there's no point. Well, It'll, so let me ask you this it. question: where, yep. does, where does Bayesian fitting fit into a regression model? So anything that can be done uh, with a linear regression model is is that is that possible that you can also do it as a Bayesian inference model, inferential model? Yeah, Bayesian is more like the interpretation if you think about it, which is so instead of basing it on the parameters of the model, it bases 
it on the simulation and the probability. So it works a lot more. So rather, I suppose you could argue is one works on the density of the population distribution and okay. creates a probability structure out of that. And the other one based it entirely on the we've sought out this from our one particular sample of data and therefore this is the truth. So one's kind of like we've recorded it and we've created this information and therefore this is our model and it's got statistical significance or not based on the realm of probability. And the one's more like we've taken these uh, parameters and then we've created lots of simulations in order to provide um, uh, better probability distribution, I suppose. So internally, a regression is actually running simulations. Is that what it does? Like when you get parameters that you, um, is, that, is that how it works? Like actually internally, it's, it's, it's just generating simulations, like, like a random sampling almost of your sample set? It kind of seems to do that. Um, certainly, because uh, a lot of it's got the you know the emitter argument. Uh, um, so when you go to doing, oh, it doesn't well, do it here. They explicitly state that they're doing a simulation, but I didn't I didn't quite know if that's also what's happening in the background, or maybe I just missed the forest for the trees. That's completely conceivable. Right Actually, there. I'm not sure. I don't think it. Uh, looking at this, it doesn't do it every time, does it? Um, what page are you on, August? Oh, uh, one. Uh, 110. Okay. I actually haven't read that page. <laughs> Gosh, I can't even believe you got this far. That's pretty impressive. Um, this is so slow. Why is it taking so long? Okay, um, shall, shall we talk through it anyway? So, um, yes, because it's a lot of like formulas. A lot of stuff. Really. And I think this is like probably the segue into more of the Bayesian stuff. So this seems like a good conceptually heavy, because I think from chapter nine onwards, it's, it's very, it's predominantly Bayesian stuff, or maybe a, a smattering of both, it seems like. I think we kind of get into the, getting yeah, well, out the, of the, the frequentist into... Exactly. The, well, this chapter does actually, um, looking at it now, it does talk about how um, regressions are, rather than just looking at this, the regression in general, yeah. how, this, how the um, Bayesian aspect works. Yeah, and that's kind of cool, because I think it, it informs the frequentist uh, vision as well. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like getting a, a different take on the same thing. And I think it, it actually makes you a better frequentist to a certain extent. Okay, yeah, take it away, August. Bayesian statistics is, uh, is I think it's more robust. I think it's probably mm. the best way to put it, um, as far as I can tell. The problem is it's computationally heavy in yeah. some cases. Yeah, because you very, very slow, great. Right. Yeah, um, it depends on a particular scenario. But if you think about it, a lot of, um, a lot of like the uh, deep learning stuff is all based on uh, Bayesian uh, probability. Um, uh, but I can't remember why exactly off the top of my head, but I do remember learning that it's kind of mm. the basis of, um, of deep learning. The anyway, of okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's go through this top up. So in this chapter, we lay out some of the mathematical structure for uh, inference for regression models and some algebra to help un understand estimation for linear regression. We mm -hmm. also explain the rationale for the use of Bayesian uh, fitting routine, which is BRM in this case for us. Uh, <clears throat> whereas I think in the case, they probably say okay, Stan. Yeah. Uh, and its connection to the classical linear regression, which is exactly what we talk about. This chapter okay. does provide background and motivation for mathematical computational tools used in the rest of the book. Cool. Okay. Yes. Uh, oh, that's kind of taken verbatim. Right. Now step back and consider inference. Uh, so this least squares method. 
The steps for uh, estimating the regression model and asserting uncertainty of fit, we start with the least squares, which is the most direct approach to estimation based on finding the values of um, A, which is the intercept, and B, which is the slope that best fits. We then discuss maximum likelihood, blah, blah, blah. And then we proceed to Bayesian inference. It's an even more general approach that applies, uh, that allows a probabilistic expression of the prior information and the posterior uncertainty. So prior information is kind of like what we, uh, how we see the distribution of the data already. And the posterior uncertainty is what we kind of build out of that data. Um, <clears throat> so, da, da, da. Mm. Uh, yeah, so what's it say here? Uh, in, so we've got the classical linear regression down here. And it's talking about, so Ri, I presume, is residuals. It maximizes some squares to reduce residuals. So um, we're talking about Yi minus um, the intercept uh, plus the uh, multiplication of the beta term, depending on what the value of beta is, right? So basically, uh, predicted values uh, taken away from the uh, actual values. And that leads to residuals. Wait, yes, yes, that's correct. So if you, if you, um, actually, I'm well, doing it's this. The sum of squares, though, so, but though here it appears to not be the squares. Well, it's the sum of squares. So basic, basically, the sum of squares is the line we draw through the, um, the Cartesian plane. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, so we draw this line, and but it's got inaccuracies. So what we do is we've got the alpha, which is the starting point, the, and the beta, which is the line. Yes. Line, and the x is the multiplication of the points along that line. And then what we do is we add all those together, and that creates our predicted value, as it were. And what we do is we take, in order to create, so that's the, our sum of squares, but we have to have some error variance. Okay. And um, so our error variance is the difference between the actual values and that line that we've drawn on the, um, through the data. And that's what RI is. That's what the residual data is. Now, we distinguish between residuals and error. And the model is written in terms of, oh yeah, the model is written in terms of error, but it's the residuals that we can work with because error is absolute, whereas residuals are based on the, the, the theoretical distribution, I believe. We cannot calculate errors as we do not, as we do not, yeah, <clears throat> as we do. So it would require knowing A and B. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just saying, like, we ha would have to have an absolute knowledge of what the real alpha and the real beta are. Do you think? Is that what it's saying? <laughs> well, the, how I understand residuals and errors is that errors is the exact is the absolute difference. Correct. Yeah. And the um, you know based on what the actual values are, uh, so we'd have to have a perfect model or something, wouldn't we? To count the errors, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh. The residuals are working with the average alpha and the average beta. Yeah, because that's what the hat means, isn't it? The, me the yes. mean intercept and the mean beta. But the thing is, we can't do that for everything. So we create... Um, Why is that? Hmm. Um, because it becomes too specific, doesn't it? Does it? I think it becomes too specific. And so that doesn't allow, it's almost like you're overfitting data by doing so. But even then you'd have to have more knowledge to do so. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Yeah, is, no, I I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put a question mark next to it and then I'll yeah. think about, um, see if we can get the answer for that later. 
residual. Anyway, the residual sum of squares is, or the RSS value is, um, so, um, so the iterative number, uh, so that basically that just means we, uh, the way how I understand that n and then i equals one is for every one iteration through the number of um, counts that we have, data points, We'll, sum, we'll summarize that data. And then we've basically inside that, we've got the uh, residual formula and we've just taken the square of that summarized residual formula. If that makes sense. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So in your okay. matrix notation, uh, so what is a beta hat? That's not the same as your B hat, right? What is beta hat? Um, that's the mean coefficient and the mean uh, intercept. What? Really? No, no, no. I'm talking about the large beta, not B. I'm talking. Oh, about that one. Sorry. Oh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, da -da -da. Alpha and beta minimizes the RSS. Uh, it's called the least the order of the written in the matrix formula as x t x minus one. Why is this not completed? Uh, I am going to stop this and then try again uh, because it's being right. Let's restart. Our... RCC, RPP. Right. Yeah, is it that? <laughs> I'm just restarting it because it would be easier to follow on screen so we can see we're seeing the same thing once. Right, I've re so I've done it. So now it should knit easier, but I bet it gets stuck on the same thing or something. This is the point we got to before. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, so beta is x t x minus one x t y, which means where uh, beta is uh, alpha and b is a vector of coefficients, and x is one progression. Oh, it's getting there. There we go. Right. Uh, let me share this. Okay, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the point we got to, where are we here? Uh, we can distinguish between residuals and errors. The model's written in terms of errors, but it is residual to work with. And then the RSS value, which doesn't come up properly because for some reason uh, it's not quite worked. Uh, yeah, we can minimize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's not come up. All right. Um, um, what's X? X equals one. X is the matrix predictors in regression. That kind of makes sense because in this, you only have one predictor. So like you have one slope, you have one constant term. And so therefore there's only one predictor. So I'm guessing in matrix notation, that's how it follows where A is your constant term, correct? And mm -hmm. B is your predictor for your X. I mean, B is your coefficient for your X predictor. Yeah. So uh, in this notation, one represents a column of ones. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Uh, we then show more general notation, but then get this, like look at equation, um, I'm sorry, expression 8.2 applies to least square. If you have a single predictor, you can write the solution as B hat is the sigma of, okay, X minus X bar. Okay. I don't really get what the T bit is. Wait, wait, what are you looking at, August? Oh, um, so in 8.2, there's X, T, and then X. T, I think, is the transpose. Or transverse, oh, okay. uh, I think it's a transpose. Yeah, because it's a matrix. So I think they have to, uh, 
don't know if that's a capital T though. Oh, no. so it's saying that it's that kind of like the bit that bit downwards. So yeah. Let's see. I just just um I'm just gonna write this out to see if I'm I'm getting it right. So um if you've got a matrix formula like this, you'd have like x1. Oh, what's this? Vanishing pen. That wasn't good, was it? <laughs> right. Uh, so you've got x1 and then mm -hmm. x. Uh, well, I suppose. Uh, well, be, this is a single predictor. An A, or I don't know. Correct. Well, and then th this would be like x2 over here, and then x2a all the way down to uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it goes in the same way as R, doesn't it? It's that uh, to um, A to B or something like that. I don't know. It depends on how you want to write it. And then down to N, down to dot dot N to mm -hmm. uh, N, and then that will be one N. Yes. Right. And so I so the transpose is. Presumably, then the whole mm -hmm. the horizontal on the yeah. So the this whole bit down here yeah. is x t. You'd have thought they'd use k. No, never mind. Um, I think the then, whole matrix is transposed, not just the first uh, uh, column. Like I and think then when next you do... to it, you've got the um, presumably. Oh, yeah. draw that right. And this is your other matrix, which is just X. So we're just saying that this is the same yeah. throughout the whole one. So that is just, that's, that's basically alpha, right? No, I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know how it, they could use X and alpha interchangeably, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't make sense. No, it, it doesn't make sense. I don't really, I don't understand what the difference is between X and XT. Yeah, I actually, I don't get that, but I was like, okay, maybe it's just the whole fact that it's a matrix notation and I don't get matrices. Maybe that, like this is, again, it goes back to the fact that my linear algebra is so weak, which is, um, you know, I did engineering and I think I know my calculus better than I know linear algebra, which really blows because you need linear algebra a lot more than you need uh, calculus and this stuff. Well, at least you know what? calculus. <laughs> so I barely got, I don't really have that much in the way of algebra either, to be honest. Yeah, it's, um, so the equation 8.3 is really interesting, uh, August, because look at that. That's how they're computing uh, their slope. And that is going from xi minus x bar, which is, of course, your mean. So times your yi over your um, your xi minus uh, your uh, um, measurement minus the mean squared. So that is uh, your standard deviation, correct? Um, no. mm. It's your uh, it's your measurement minus your mean. So the solution is to be had. I'm not quite sure how that equation came to be. That um, the eight point three equation. And A bar minus, uh, and A bar is equal, I mean, A hat is equal to Y. Is that the, is that the actual predicted values? Which one? The, the hats are all the. The, the YI is, that the is your measurement values and then the squared values are the absolute. I feel like your YI is what you measured it's it's actually what was it's not your prediction yes the dependent variable you're right sorry um yeah so that is what was measured and you're subtracting the mean from your x so you're basically getting it to uh what is it uh 
I don't know. Like the Siberians. Yes, that is correct. It's, yeah, that's correct. Um, that's so correct. you've got the squared variant versus the, um, the squared variants versus the um, observed variants. Yeah, I suppose that's what it is. What's he say here? Um, let's play this uh, general drawings and then let's uh, stop annotating. Where are we? Um, it would be better. If, it'd be nice if these formulas actually worked. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do you mean? I think he might have put in too many um, too many of these uh, too many uh, what's it dollar signs I think it's meant to be one dollar sign and that's what's caused the formulas to break okay in fact I actually have to find and replace this dollar dollar Oops, dollar Right, okay, and then we could just re remit it. Let's hope that works. Finish. Stop. Okay, whatever. Um, anyway, so let's just read this um, in error yeah. terms. Uh, error comes from distribution with mean of zero and uh, standard deviation, which is sigma. So we know that anyway. So when we're working out the error terms, what we're trying to do is create it create a mean of so the, the whole point of these formulas is to create a, um, a mean of zero isn't it yes and then you build up your distribution around that yeah um standard deviation can be estimated from the data so yeah the standard deviation can be estimated from data which is what uh, most of this is doing uh sorry so that's creating the distribution around the beta i suppose around beta um, um, Y minus B times X. Oh, God, come on. Um, in case of... Basically, what it says is the line goes through the mean of the data. And that's what all of this data essentially leads to. And then we have the RI value, um, which we can't see here. Uh, Ah, the natural way to estimate uh, the standard deviation would be to simply take the standard deviation of the residuals. But this would be slightly underestimating the standard deviation, which is why we add on the one at the end uh, as coefficient of be set. Standard correction for this is to replace the n with n minus two. I thought it was n minus one. Um, the original for that, but okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's necessarily important to um, to pick out the whole of these formulas so much. Well, the thing though is I what I, be... I don't get is I still don't understand equations 8.3 and 8.4. Um, Well, it's the sum of what well, it seems to. I think it'd be easier to kind of like create ourselves, to be honest. Um, but 
that seems to be the sum of whatever the predictive is yeah. minus the mean of the predictive times by the dependent variable. For, yeah. So um, did that work? It didn't work. Okay. Never mind. Uh, right. Uh, let me see if I can create something. No, it's okay, August. I think. Uh... Okay. I mean, it does go into it later on, doesn't it? Uh, right. So, um, okay. when it gets down to this part here, because that's what they're essentially doing. Um, so, what they're saying is in order to get the error, right? the least squares estimate. We're basically taking the sum of the observed values and dividing it by the sum of the residuals for squared, the sum of the observed, the sum of the, the multiplication of the observed values and against the squared values. And then we basically do the same for alpha. You can remove most of that formula and just take that as the, if you, if you ignore the, the sigma n i and all the one stuff, you can actually remove all that kind of stuff. You can ignore that and you say, well, I know that I'm doing it for each uh, each observation yeah. and then you could just say it's this it's the squared the squared residuals uh it's the observed residuals over the squared residuals for beta and then then what we're saying is we use that number and then times that by whatever the val whatever value of beta it is and take that away from the is the flats above the y the mean of the dependent, or is it the absolute of the dependent? I'm not sure what the flat bit, the flat part, I'm not sure what the flat line means on the Y. Yeah, I'm not either. Uh, this line goes through. I can't remember what the difference is between the hat and the flat. <laughs> the hat and the that's the mean the flat is the mean and the hat is the measured right measured okay oh okay so yeah right okay yeah that, that makes sense okay and therefore because um beta is measured y is measured uh, sorry i mean a the alpha is measured okay that makes sense I mean, yeah Okay, sorry, uh, that took a long time for me to get my head around. No, okay, no. Um, all right, and then the estimate of the standard deviation is, well, I mean, again, you can get rid of a lot of this, a lot of this information. So if you look at the formula that's in there, they're just calculating the residuals. And then what they're doing is they're getting the square roots of, uh, some of the residuals. Yeah, some of the residuals, essentially, yeah. Okay, and then we then move down to, there's a correction, so then they just add the, so instead of the having the divide by one, uh, divide by the mm. yeah. uh, number of observations, they have two in order to account for all, giving it some more degree of freedom. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I never understood that when I was doing what degrees of freedom actually meant until <laughs> much, yeah. much later. Yeah. Okay. And so that gives you the, that gives you the standard deviation as opposed to just the, um, just the actual deviation. Now, so then the next part is, well, what's K? Oh, K is when you have N predictors. So when you have additional predictors, you need to add more, um, more, elements to allow more freedom because as you add predictors you decrease your you add information but by adding information you can increase the 
uh, well, you can stop, what's it, you can pick up more noise. So you have to have more freedom when you have more noise. Or, is, or you have to have penalised for it, rather, which is why it says K rather than 2. It's interesting that there it becomes a capital X I beta hat. What is that? Mm, oh, th that's the generally in a regression with K predictors, then it just becomes okay. Yeah, so that's just taking into account the different predictors. So it's just capital X times beta. Yeah, it's okay. converted it at that point into a matrix formula. Yeah, because right? yeah. Yeah, X because basically that's X times yeah. B. Uh, and X can be anything along the uh, yeah. along matrices. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's it's a weird way of writing it, actually when you think about it because basically they've combined. They said. Um, yeah, it's a weird way of writing because they're basically saying, "Oh well, we're going to ignore kind of ignore the constant now, or it, you're just going to assume that it's part of this matrices." And then you're timesing all of that by whatever the uh, observed value of, or the measured value of B, beta is. Okay. Oh, it's amazing what twigs when you just like uh, talk it, you know, think about it. Okay, so we can go through this part where they compute it. So um, the least squares estimate coefficient. Right, so here we make a custom function to compute the least, the sum of squares for different values, alpha and beta. Um, so function takes, uh, four elements, X and Y are vectors, A and B are scalars. Uh, uh, scalar is a single value, isn't it? So that would be like, say, um, say we start at two and then whatever the value is of B and X and Y are vectors. So Y is whatever the outcome variable is, and uh, is it all square? Some of Okay. Okay, so if we look at here, down here, um, oh, my internet connection is unstable. Um, if we look down here and you look at the matrix, uh, what they use here is, so if we think this, we create this RSS function and it takes four elements, which are X and Y, which are our yeah. vectors, and then alpha and beta, which is basically our intercept and our coefficient um, and those are single terms as opposed to vectors. Those are not so, vectors? Um, the first two vectors. So if we're looking at this data here, we have um, growth is our... Um, what? Growth yeah. is our X, so that's our predicted yeah. value. And then our Y value is the vote. So did they vote or not? Okay. And then, uh, then that... Then 46 is our uh, the starting point, so that's the intercept, and three is our coefficient. So how did they get get that the 46? Oh, I think that's how they that was the actual measurements, right? They estimated not estimated. This is not an estimate. This actually came from their actual uh, data. So well, if if you remember the so this is the um, what's it called the economic data, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, so it's kind of like we expect. Uh, starting point for voting is that the economy will be um, will be sorry voting for the incumbent is 46.3 well no what i'm saying is that uh, that that data comes from figure 7.1 and i think that that data was already measured so this it's not a predictive or whatever it's actually the measured values oh That's yes how. yeah yeah. Yeah. So, so those are we've got those out of regression. So that's our that's our uh, intercept, and that's our coefficient uh, of b. And then we to then 
or when we're calculating the residual yeah. sum of squares, yeah. we basically are taking the yeah. um, that these well we're using the we're taking the uh, y from yeah. the x in order to create the residual. Yeah. And That's then going exactly. through, you know, or the other formulas in order to pull that yeah. out. So and it says we can try it out where you have 46.3 and 3.0. It evaluates the residual sum of squares at the least squares estimate of that. And we can experiment with other values of A and B to see that you don't get, um, okay, I get it. So if you had to experiment with any other values of uh, uh, A and B, you wouldn't get that value of your, so that mm -hmm. already gives you the least squares uh, when, when, you, when it gives you that equation. Yes. So that's our uh, residual sum squares. Um, okay, so uh, the residual sum squares. squares is minus. How did you, uh, we can distinguish between that and errors where, so why add? Oh yeah, so look, he explores the difference so, between, uh, we might explore different yes. values of A and B to start out. We'll try a vector of uh, yeah. alpha values. So while we're, uh, uh, retaining uh, yeah. the three. So here he changes the value of alpha yeah. and the residual sum of squares goes uh, yeah. way, way down and then up, up, up. Yeah. Um, quite interesting. Yeah. And um, now you can vary both A and B each across a continuum of parameters. Uh, and where the fill of each tile is the RSS value. You know, this is exactly what I have wanted to see for a very, very, very long time. This is exactly what I have wanted to know how it's done. So, so they're actually showing you that whole thing in three dimensional. So, wow, that's really mind boggling. So B is held constant at 3.0 and then they vary the value of A and then they vary both A and B each across. Oh. Huh. And, and, it, uh, and then he does the same with, is this the same with B, crossing a sequence along blah, blah, sequence along B, blah, blah, blah. Right, so. Double. Uh, so ignore that, it's map two. So he's created two lists there, I suppose. Peter, and then there is applying RSS to that. Oh, I see. Right, okay. I was one. I was one thinking <laughs> there's quite a lot more in um, one list than the other there. Actually, it works out slightly different than that because of yeah, uh, that's correct. The, the buy, right? Um, anyway, then he's yeah. created this geon tile in order to yeah. show the um, the RSS value as they move over time. Since your only least squares estimate emphasizes the smallest RSS, um, so the smallest RSS is down here, isn't it? When you've got an alpha of 46, ah, yeah, so here, here right, is what comes out the regression. So if we change the alpha or the beta, we move away from these points. So it's, fine, it's quite finely tuned that the optimal point, which alpha can be, is 46. Uh, oh, yeah, because it's in the dark area. Sorry, not the light area. So, so it, is the, it is the lowest point for, the combina for that combination of A and B. It's not done in, in, in singularity, right? So... When you vary both A and B, the least point that they get is for that combination of how many other parameters there are. So if there's more than two, uh, then it'll be for all three across whatever dimension that mm. you have the least uh, value of your uh, RSS, correct? So Yeah, so you see how this is an ellipsis. What, it, what they're saying is that the very smallest value of the RSS is right in the center of this ellipsis. Well, that's how I understand it. So um, the smallest possible value of the RSS of the residual sum of squares will be right at the center of where the alpha and the beta, um, uh, what's it, kind of um, 
the so optimal that value continuum the of beta. parameters august that continuum of parameters like it's determined programmatically correct like it's nothing that we specify when we want to get the the ols equation it's something that the program goes through probably uh, as a you know as an iterative process where it runs i i don't know if those if that range of the starting parameter range is something that we can set or if it's done internally right well i think what it's showing is that um i think what it's showing is that the rss will be the smallest value possible because we already because we've already done the regression the regression's already told us what those values are but what that also potentially can translate to is if we were then doing simulations of the data, we would do what, want to minimize the RSS, the residual sum squares, as to something similar. Well, I also think that for regression itself, before it came up with 46.3 and the 3.0, it seems like it may have gone through something similar, correct? Even with, hmm. because I don't think that that, that was cast in stone just based on the fact that it's a regression and not a simulation. I think even for that, it appears to have done something similarly where, I mean, I don't know how that, how that, that, that range of um, that A and B is determined, like within the program that, that computes your least, your, uh, your least squares regression line. But I'm thinking that that's something that happens even internally. Yeah. It, it, it is it seems to be something yeah it's certainly something that happens internally right um i certainly agree uh since ordinary least squares estimate emphasizes the smallest rss because that's what it's designed to do correct um, i just don't know how that range is arrived at like internally if you didn't already specify i mean let's say i just gave it the values of uh my a and b and like for like say i have 100 values of x so i have 100 outcome variables so i have 100 uh um, I have 100 values of, uh, wait, yeah, so I have 100 of, uh, I have 100 x's and therefore I have 100 y's. And so the, sum, the, the oldest method is going, is going to go in and, and try to find the midpoints of all of those um, y's and it's going to plot that, that line, that slow, that, that line, your regression line. And it's probably at that point, even going through a combination of your A and B estimations that gives you mm. the least RSS. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I, I think this is, um, the way how this is written is kind of like over egging the pudding, um, if it were, if that makes any sense, which is because you are using the mean of these values anyway, you're always going to find yourself in the middle. So you can vary the alpha and the beta if you want. But the thing is, is that, that that it doesn't happen in the equation unless you remove the information um as far as i th th as far as i understand it it's kind of like this is playing around with the data but it wouldn't be calculated in this way because we, we're automatically picking that out from the prior information and therefore the prior information is what leads you to having the optimal point of uh at least some the uh the very uh, minimizing the residual squared sum of squares. <sighs> Jeez. <laughs> the, all right. So the next part's the part that I find harder to wrap my head around, um, uh, which is the maximum likelihood. So if the errors for the linear model are independent and normally distributed, which they normally are, uh, well, supposedly. Uh, so that yi is a function of what? <laughs> so that yi is a function of... So here, August, you know what I think? Um, I really feel like yeah. I want to write the code for this and I'm, I'm having a really hard time now wrapping my brain around this. And I think this is kind of really important to get. So do you mind if we spend some time on this and actually write the code and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and discuss this next week? Because I would like to put some time into um getting a mental model of this yeah sure sure no worries um i think also um have you seen stack quest um that's really good at explaining ah, stuff like this okay will you drop the link in uh in stack uh i mean in our uh group uh, thing and uh 
I, I really want to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the initiative to prepare the thing for this next week, but I, I kind of want to, like even 8.1, I just want to understand and understand it in its entirety. So do you mind if we do that next week? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, no worries. So, uh, it, is, it is important to understand this stuff properly. Um, yeah. And then right at the very end of this chapter, it does talk about, um, talks yeah. about the Bayesian stuff I think yeah. really it's when we get into chapter nine that we really get into Bayesian, get into the Bayesian uh, prediction and yeah. yes. so Bayes yeah. that's where it really kicks off yeah okay sounds good August so uh, I've got to run now but um let I'll I'll, I'll